Am I the a-hole for leaving a note on my neighbor's doorstep about his screaming children? I have lived in the same apartment building for about five years. Throughout my time here, I've had many neighbors come and go, and I have never had any noise issues. However, last year, a new neighbor moved in three units down. He's about 40 and has three children under the age of four. For months, I have listened to his children scream or cry all day long, whether it be in his apartment or in the hallway. At first, I tried to ignore the behavior as I felt bad it appeared he was a newly single father and was struggling. However, as time went on, it became clear that he just straight up lets his kids behave however they want. For example, when they shriek at the top of their lungs in the hallway or right outside my door, he never says, shh, let's be quiet or anything at all. He just lets it happen without a peep. Additionally, I have come to realize the frequency and the volume of the screaming crying or shrieking is way beyond what is normal. I'd venture to say I hear anywhere from 10 minus 15 full-on tantrums every single day, all of which are ear-piercingly loud, and like I said, he does not say or do anything about these tantrums, it's now at the point where I find myself frustrated and annoyed in my own home all the time. Right now, I'm working on a paper in my apartment and I can't even concentrate because all I can hear are his children. Because of this, I wrote a note a polite note and left it on his doorstep. Essentially, my note said that I sympathized with him, but the noise is out of control. I also stressed that I wanted to confront him directly first. I realize that sounds hypocritical since I left an anonymous note rather than going straight to management. Am I the a-hole for leaving this note? Should I have handled it differently? Update. After reading the comments on my original post, I decided to remove the note before my neighbor saw it. I took what some of you said into consideration, perhaps I just needed to be more patient. I decided if the noise issue escalated, then I'd do something. Otherwise, I would just suck it up and use headphones like some of you advised. Well, today, his children screamed or shrieked four times within a one-hour period in the hallway. This was right by my door about two feet away from my apartment. The fourth time it happened, I opened my door and said, please don't scream in the hallway, guys. Once I said this, he told me that his kids are allowed to scream in the hallway or anywhere else in the building that they feel like. I told him that actually, no, they're not, according to our lease. He then told me to suck it up and to contact management and to not talk to him. After our conversation, he told all three of his kids you can be as loud as you want in here, and then shot me a nasty look, and proceeded to walk to the stairs. Once he said that, all three kids started squealing as loud as possible, on purpose. I sent management an email and they are talking to him first thing in the morning. I know some of you suggested I do this in the first place I wish I did. Update 2. I just went down to the management office to follow up with the manager. She said she had a meeting set for today at 1 p.m. with the resident. She immediately contacted him when I emailed her last night. But then today, he emailed her saying he could no longer make the 1 p.m. meeting and asked why he had to come down but he's in his apartment right now doing nothing. He doesn't work. She told him he is in violation of his lease and it's best if he comes down. Apparently, he didn't reply to her. She told me that if he doesn't come down to meet with her, she is going to draft an official lease violation letter and begin the process of eviction. I was blown away she's a great manager. She told me that his reaction telling me his kids are allowed to yell and in telling the kids to keep yelling is the reason for how she's handling this, not purely the noise complaint. She said she's horrified and disgusted that somebody would handle the situation this way. Her and I both agreed that it was strange he would encourage me to not speak to him and to contact management rather than just simply telling his kids and appreciating I said something to him directly. Update 3. After I talked with management, I saw my neighbor bring his children to their mother's house. He's been in his apartment alone for the last few days and hasn't come out. He has all the blinds drawn. He posted the following status on social media I am the perfect success in all areas of life my husband follows him, which is how I know this. I think he's pretending he's not home to avoid both myself and management. I don't know what to make of it and I don't plan on getting involved. Am I the a-hole for making my teens 16M and 14F share a bedroom? Throwaway account. My husband unexpectedly passed away a few months ago, and I became a single mother to three kids, age 16 meters, 14F and to F. Due to the significant decrease of income, I was no longer able to continue renting where we were, and I all I can afford is a one-bedroom apartment. Currently, I am sleeping in the living room with my youngest daughter. I gave the bedroom to my 16M and 14F and asked them to share. In the meanwhile, 
I tried adding a privacy screen in the middle so they feel like they have their own space, but they are telling me that this isn't acceptable. Each of my kids used to have their own rooms, so this is a massive change for them. I have been looking for a better paying job for months and so far have had no luck. I can't get a second job because I can't afford to pay someone to care for my youngest daughter outside daycare hours. Neither of my kids 16M and 14F are willing to help, and they say my youngest is not their responsibility. I know this situation isn't ideal, but I don't know what else I can do. For the past month, I've not been eating anything for two days a week and just telling the kids I'm trying out the fasting trend for weight loss purposes. But the truth is, I can't afford to feed us all, and I have been using the food bank. Prior to this, I had never had to use food bank services before, and I am so thankful that it exists. I am both thankful and deeply ashamed at the same time. Would I be the a hole for telling my teens that they must share the bedroom? Would it be better if I suggested my son sleep in the living room with me and have both my female kids share the bedroom instead? I do not live in the United States, but it is not common for teenagers of opposite gender to share a bedroom. That is something I do absolutely recognize. Edit. Gosh. I really wasn't expecting so many responses when I checked back. Thank you everyone. All this time. I did feel it would be unfair to put adult problems on my kids. However, I will be giving them a surface-level talk about our finances. I'll also be bringing them with me to the food bank. Hopefully, they'll be more understanding. Edit 2. The bedroom is larger than the living room. I am able to fit two single beds into the bedroom and the kids have space to store their clothes while still having the room divider in the middle. The living room is smaller. I currently have my youngest and my own clothes stored in the hallway due to lack of space. It is right next to the washroom and kitchen, so there is a lot of foot traffic. The living room also doubles as dining space because there is no dining room. Update. I had a chat with my kids after work. I still don't want to put an adult problem onto my kids, so I only gave them a brief overview of the dire financial issues we're having after my husband or their father passed away. Us downsizing to a one-bedroom apartment was not by choice. I also told them the truth about how I couldn't afford to feed us all and why I didn't eat to days of the week. I was afraid of how they would take the news, but it had gone better than I expected. My kids will be coming with me to the food bank for the next trip to help out. In terms of the rooming situation, both my older kids agreed that they did not want to share a room with my youngest because she frequently wakes up at night and also has accidents. They also don't want to share with me because I get up much earlier than them to work, and it would disrupt their sleep. They would rather share the room with each other while I continue to sleep in the living room with my youngest. My 16M and 14F told me that their friends were saying no kid should ever have to watch their sibling because they didn't create them. They've been told by their friends that it's parentification to be asked to babysit for even an hour, and it is never okay in any circumstance. That was why they kept calling me Anna Hole when I asked if they could help with childcare so I could get a second job. Now that they know how bad the situation is, my son said he wants to find a part-time job to help contribute. My daughter apologized and said it wasn't that she hated me or her sister. Both my son and daughter said they are willing to help take care of the youngest so I can get a second job. Hopefully, I can find something soon and be able to move to a larger space. I started my new job and am so excited. Since my last post explaining my housing situation, I have found a night shift job working security. It only pays minimum wage, and I only get 25 hours per week, but it's at least something. I now work to jobs. So far, this job has been very relaxed. There honestly isn't much to do during my shifts, so I'm trying to save up enough money so I can move to somewhere larger, as well as take an online training program while working. I already asked my manager and he said he was okay with me taking remote training while on my shift as long as there truly is nothing to do and it doesn't negatively impact my ability to work when needed. Hopefully, I can find a better job after upskilling.